cuando era más pequeña no veía fútbol femenino porque bueno, no tenía acceso, básicamente. Y porque en mi casa solo estaba el fútbol masculino, que era lo que daban por la tele. Entonces, eh, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Iniesta, sobre todo, Xavi, sobre todo, luego Messi también, eran mis, mis referentes. Y luego ya cuando fui creciendo, me gustó siempre eh, Camila Vili, Luis Anezip y Nadine Kessler. Eh, me parecían tres mediocentros con muchísima calidad. Y bueno, intentaba aprender lo que podía de ellas. Soy Alexia Putellas, nací en Mollet del Valle, España, y soy futbolista. Empecé pues, con seis años o así, eh, jugaba todo el rato en el patio del colegio, en, en la plaza del pueblo. Eh, no sé de dónde me viene la pasión por el fútbol porque eh, realmente no he tenido ningún familiar eh, profesional de fútbol, pero sí que es verdad que eran muy seguidores del, del Barça, entonces en mi casa siempre estaban viendo partidos de fútbol. a ganar eh, y, y necesito a mis compañeras para, para eso, lógicamente, es un deporte de equipo. Entonces intento siempre pues, ayudarlas dándole un mejor pase o, o dándoles más tiempo para, para poder ejecutar. A mí me encanta la presión, me encanta eh, saber que cada partido lo tengo que ganar, que tenemos que ser las mejores, eso... Eso me encanta, lo entiendo como que forma parte de mi profesión y seguramente si no sintiera eso me aburriría. Solo con ponerte la camiseta del club implica que tienes que ganar todo. Entonces, bueno, lo he entendido como que ya forma parte de, de esta profesión. Eh, lo mismo cuando venimos aquí a, en la selección. Ganar algo con la selección es algo que quiero realmente. Entonces, eh, bueno, para conseguir eso hay que trabajar mucho. Hay mucho nivel, hay muchísimas selecciones que, que tienen a grandes jugadoras, que son grandes selecciones y, y va a ser muy complicado, pero, pero bueno, tenemos que hacer todo lo que esté en nuestra mano para, para tener opciones de, de estar ahí y luego pues el fútbol dirá, ¿no? pero al menos conseguir tener muchas opciones de eso. Hey, I'm Viviana Miedema, I play for Arsenal and the Netherlands. I think obviously after winning it in 2017, it's not really um, the same team anymore. I think a lot of countries around us have made massive steps. Um, I wouldn't say we go in as a favorite. I think we've got, um, if everything is right, we can be a dark horse. But I think there's countries like England, Spain, Germany, who are all better than us. Um, and I'd like to put the pressure on them instead of on ourselves. <laughs> Je suis dans une grande équipe, je suis dans un poste euh, qu'on regarde beaucoup. C'était compliqué à gérer au début parce que c'était quelque chose de nouveau que je connaissais pas, qu'il faut apprendre à gérer, surtout avec mon caractère. J'étais moins affirmé ou je gérais moins, moins bien. Ça va mieux aujourd'hui, après euh, je pense que j'ai beaucoup de caps encore à passer. J'espère connaître plusieurs compétitions. Il y en a beaucoup qui arrivent pour franchir ces capes aussi. Je suis Marie Antoinette Casotto, je joue pour la France. 
quand tu n'es pas sûr de toi à 100%, quand tu es un peu en retrait, quand tu t'exprimes pas beaucoup, euh, ça paraît compliqué. Il y en a qui ont plus de facilité, comme euh, Cristiano Ronaldo, qui est un peu plus sûr, euh, sûr, de, sûr de ses qualités, sûr de lui, de, sûr de ce qu'il va faire. Donc, euh, je pense que j'aimerais un peu avoir de lui et un peu le juste milieu. Mais ouais, c'est, c'est difficile. A lot of different experiences have shaped me in the player and person I am right now. I think going to the World Cup as an 18-year-old in Canada, other side of the world, um, with the pressure of basically making my home country. World champion was really tough. Um, I think after that, obviously the Euros, the World Cup in France, uh, the Olympics last summer, They've all shaped you and, and made you more experienced. Um, I moved away when I was 17. I went to Munich. Also a massive step for me in my career, but also as a person. And um, I think looking back, although they've not all been really nice experiences, I think they've made me a lot stronger and made me appreciate football more. J'ai pris de l'expérience avec la Ligue des Champions. Depuis un moment, en équipe de France, on enchaîne beaucoup de gros matchs, surtout avec de très belles nations. Donc, euh, j'apprends, j'apprends match après match. Mais j'espère que la France passera enfin le cap des au moins dernier carré. La verdad que me siento super agradecida cada vez que me levanto por la mañana, que lo primero que hago es Lo que más me gusta que es ir a entrenar. Estoy muy bien eh, con mis compañeras, nos conocemos de hace mucho tiempo. Eh, me encanta el que tengamos el mismo objetivo y que lo entendamos eh, de, de la misma manera todas. Eso es algo que me pone muy, muy feliz, ¿no? porque al final ves como todo el mundo está comprometido, todo el mundo tiene el mismo objetivo y, y que no paramos hasta alcanzarlo. That was everything I never dreamed of when I started playing when I was four years of age. And, you know, you imagine yourself walking out lights and just having your fans, like, just chanting and singing. That's the sort of stuff that you do dream of. And I remember when I was walking out and I said to the girls uh, who were standing either side of me, I said, girls, just enjoy this and just take a moment to just take it in because we worked so, so hard to get to this moment. And, you know, that's what we did. I remember singing the anthem and I was, like, sort of tearing up because it was a really, really emotional, you know, moment in time for us. We created history and to be a part of that as well was just absolutely incredible and it's something that nothing will ever take that away from me. My name is Simone McGill and I play for Northern Ireland. so hard I finally got here so in the first game I think about 79 80 minutes in I've felt a little bit of contact and obviously stuck my leg out I just remember feeling this like popping sort of sensation and I immediately knew that I had done something really really bad here I've done my ACL um, you know why has this had to happen to me and I think I was just so angry and upset as opposed to being in pain in that moment and I just remember the physio and the doctor you know ran over and they were trying to say can you straighten your leg can you stand on I was like I need to get off the pitch right now um I know what this is and and it just get me off and off I went and then I think the next day we obviously found out that it was what we expected and that my tournament obviously was over and that I have you know very extensive rehab road ahead and I think it's it's something that is just sinking in every day um, the realization that 
you have this really serious injury and you've got such a long road ahead to get yourself back on the pitch. So it's just something that I've accepted now uh, and I'm just trying to remain as positive as I can just to get through every day. Hi, I'm Ali Monajati, Director of Performance and Crystal Palace Football Club and a Senior Lecturer at the University of East London. My specialty is ACL injury prevention in female elite football players. The ACL basically standing for anterior cruciate ligament. So basically is one of the very important ligaments inside your knee which its main job is to give stability to your knees, especially during the rapid movement, change of direction, deceleration. And also the other job uh, is to make sure the loading on the knee is balanced. So basically all parts of the knee functioning and moving smoothly on top of each other. And it's not like that one side of the knee is more loaded than the other side. So stability and balancing the load is the most important job for the ACL. And that's where the problem is coming. When you don't have that ACL, or if it's not functioning properly, then you're gonna experience all sorts of issues in your knee from the lack of stability, from the incorrect loading on different parts of the knee, which gonna have a knock-on effect in the future as well. I think uh, the ACL injury is, is, is certainly something concerning, and I hope, um, yeah, we'll soon find out what the reasons are for so many injuries. The female player depend on different studies three to six times more likely to suffer from the ACL injuries. And there are several reasons behind it. Part of those reasons are hormonal, some of them are anatomical, some of them are neuromuscular. The ACL injury in football is like a cancer in your life. So it drains you physically, it drains you emotionally and psychologically, it drains you financially, you or the club or organization, wherever it is. So it has a huge impact. And on top of that, it has an impact in your career as well. There are so many articles, there are so many publications, there are so many great work, there are so many great physio out there that working on the like a physical rehabilitation. But I think sometimes the psychological aspect of that is forgotten. So we always have the physiotherapies available there. Do we have the psychologists always available for every single patient? I don't think that's the case, but I think the psychologist is as important as a physiotherapist when we have uh, like these, these kind of injuries that keep you out for six to nine months. So I'll be with the rest of that, it? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go. I actually remember when we were all sitting and we heard about Pateas and it had happened to her and my heart broke inside for her. I was like, I actually could not imagine how she must feel. And then two days later, the exact same thing happened to me. And it, it is just shattering because I think it's not even the severity of knowing I've got an injury. You just think as, as an athlete, you think I'm out for such a long period of time. Like I'm not going to be able to play a game of football for such a long period of time. And I think that's the bit that gets you, you know, and until you're in that, I don't think anyone can actually understand just how tough that is. Fue un golpe duro. No fui consciente de que no la iba a jugar hasta bien bien después de la operación. O sea, pasaron unos cuantos días en el que mi cuerpo pues no sentía que hubiera pasado nada diferente. Hasta que bueno pasaron unos diez días o así. Entonces ya empecé a ver con, con tristeza los partidos de la Eurocopa.
Y bueno, para mí era importante pues, cerrar el ciclo este de la Eurocopa, o sea, mi sentimiento con la Eurocopa. No llegó a empezar el, no llegué a empezar la Eurocopa, pero sí que quería cerrar ese sentimiento y era importante pues, vivir un partido de la Eurocopa, aunque fuera pues, en la grada con, el, con la rodilla como, como estaba. ¿no? Pero, pero bueno, mentalmente creo que me fue bien porque fue cerrar pues, una cosa que tuve durante mucho tiempo en la cabeza. No de la manera que me hubiera gustado, pero bueno. En ese partido, pues ellas obviamente sabían que yo estaba ahí y todos los goles me los, me los dedicaron. De, bueno, supongo que era pues, como una muestra de eh, lo que pueda hacer que te vaya a hacer bien, pues lo vamos a hacer. Y bueno, súper agradecida tanto a las compañeras como todos los mensajes que he ido recibiendo. Eh, bueno, todo todo el cariño que me ha hecho llegar muchísima gente, que bueno, que al final ahora pues también son, son muestras y, y los cojo como una motivación para poder devolverles en el campo y agradecerles todo este, este apoyo en este proceso. Speaking of experience of injuries, I think people have no understanding of yeah how isolated an injury can be, especially for someone who's used to be surrounded by people, your friends, 24/7, in a job, in a profession that is very structured, very organized, very routine based. So a very tough time mentally, of course, for players, an experience that is not easy to go through and something that is underestimated. Also, again, if you consider that to be a footballer is the best job in the world, but you can also go very quickly from hero to zero. I think with being out in a tournament or like being injured or being sick, um, I think people always forget that it's not just you feeling it, it's not you, just you living it. It was obviously really frustrating for me to pick up COVID after the first game. Never had COVID in, in two years' time. Um, but yeah, then you start realizing what actually has happened and I think that's the moment that is even, even worse because when you first feel bad, That's the only thing you're focusing on. But then after that, you obviously focus on having missed the game. Um, I was sitting alone in my room on the FaceTime to, to Sari and Shaki at that moment. And um, to be really honest, we were all crying, obviously, when the national anthem was on. Um, it's just been devastating not to be part of the team, not to help the team. I felt really good. I think it probably could have been my Euros, if you look back at it, how I felt and obviously how I've been feeling the last couple of years. But it's also football and obviously, um, Yeah, I really hope that we've got a chance to, to do things better at the World Cup next year. Uh, pero bueno, mira, si es el destino que el día antes quiso que, pues que eso se rompiera, que no lo jugara, y, y ya está. Y, y bueno, la, la moraleja pues, es vivir más que nunca el presente, aunque te prepares para cosas o para objetivos que tengas en un futuro, pero pero bueno, vivir el día a día y lo que pasará en el futuro, pues no sabemos. Sabemos cómo es la mente humana, que es, tiende a recordar solo lo, lo último y no toda la temporada. Entonces, eh, bueno, sinceramente sí que me sorprendió eh, por eso, por lo que estoy diciendo, ¿no? Porque el último tramo de temporada fue la Eurocopa y yo no la jugué. Y la gente normalmente se queda solo con, con el resultado, ¿no? Y, y, y bueno, me sorprendió, pero, pero bueno, eso lo hace más especial aún y, y agradezco de las personas que, que lo han hecho posible y, y de que se acuerden pues, de, de la temporada de, que va desde agosto hasta, hasta julio. A 
al final también va un poco relacionado con el momento en el que estoy ahora, entonces cualquier cosa de estas, eh, cualquier premio, cualquier victoria, cualquier, eh, cualquier cosa de estas, pues es muy agradecido, es un motivo de celebración, ¿no? Entonces, bueno, eh, muy agradecida de, de que me lo dieran, de todas las personas que, que creyeron que lo merecía y, y bueno, es también un motivo más de, de motivación para, para, bueno, para recordar que quieres eh, volver a jugar, de que quieres volver a estar a un nivel muy, muy bueno eh, para que el equipo se beneficie y poder conseguir muchos títulos. Well, I think it should make us all proud if we have moments where players, women's football goes into the big stadia and individual players are hyped and supported by their fans. I think, uh, again, Alexia's situation, um, her dream to play in Camp Nou is a very special one, a very emotional one, I guess, for her and the club. It's been always the story of her life. So if Camp Nou starts, chanting Alexia the way they chant for Messi, then this is a great, great achievement uh, for her, um, for the club, but also for women's football overall, because it shows us actually, yeah, where, where, where we can go and maybe what can be achieved also for many other female players. When I started, there wasn't even the profession of a woman footballer, at least in Spain. So, well, the truth is, 20 años ha cambiado todo muchísimo y creo que en los próximos años va a cambiar muchísimo más. Maybe in the end you're successful or not, but everything that happens on the road for me is the most important thing. Oh, nein. Parents are crucial. Ich kam damals wirklich mit strahlenden Augen, glaube ich, zurück. I never imagined that I could be professional in my country. In the end, we can see we can ins inspire so many people out there, and it's growing, growing, growing.